Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Alhamdulillah. So we left off at verse 78 from Surah Ali Imran. And I think everybody knows who Imran is now. Am I right? We're not going to forget. Good. Alhamdulillah. So we left off, we were talking specifically about a group within the Ahlul Kitab. Who is, remind me, who is Ahlul Kitab? What does Ahlul Kitab mean? Jews and Christians, people of the book. Okay, and we were specifically talking about the Jews in this context. So we're at verse 78. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ لَفَرِيقًا يَلْوُونَ أَلْسِنَتَهُمْ بِالْكِتَابِ لِتَحْسَبُوهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ There are some among them who distort the book with their tongues to make you think that this is from the book. Meaning this modification that they're doing is from the book. But it is not really from the book. So what people used to do is they would go and they would take something that's from the, their copy of the Torah that they have with them. And they would modify it and they would make an adjustment and they would say, this is what our book says. But in reality, that's not what their book says. So, you know, there's, when somebody does something wrong, right, there's different ways to do something wrong. One way to do something wrong is to, you know, not understand what you're saying. So let's say you have a book. Let's say you have a copy of the Quran and you're reading it and you're completely misunderstanding it. Now, you should go and you should double check with somebody who has knowledge so that you're not making a mistake of understanding the book of Allah. But imagine you understood exactly what it's saying and you know the wording and then you purposely change around the wording because you want it to mean something completely different. That is like the worst type of sin you could possibly be doing. And this is exactly what was happening with the some of the Ahl al-Kitab, particularly the Jews in the city of Medina at the time. So what were they doing? Among the things that they were doing is, and we've seen this before in Surah Al-Baqarah, there were three main instances of what they did. One of them is, in their book, they were supposed to say, it says, Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we obey. So their prophet's telling them, you should listen and you should say that we obey. They would change that and they would say, Sami'na wa asayna. In their own language, it was a word that sounded similar to obey, but it actually means disobey. So there's some words that sound similar. I'll give you another example. This also from the Quran we saw in Surah Al-Baqarah. It says, uh, <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the, to the Muslims, do not say ra'ina, but say unzurna. So when, when somebody's calling someone, say, hey, I have a question for you. Can you please pay attention? I want to ask you some, a question. There was a word in Arabic which said ra'ina, means pay attention to us. Like we have, we have something for you. It's like saying, excuse me. You know, excuse me, I have a question for you. So they would go to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and... Instead of saying ra'ina, excuse me, they would do a little twist on the wording and they would change it to something that was like ra'ina. So ra'ina and ra'ina sound so similar, but one of them means, excuse me, like I have a question for you. Ra'ina means my little shepherd. <laughs> now you see the problem. Now imagine you go up to somebody who's in the status of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and when you call him, you're saying, my shepherd, right? It's like, and, and if you look at society at the time, there's, you know, every society has some very high positions. You know, people in, people who have like PhDs or they're doctors or something, they're considered to be, because they went through such a, so, such, so many years of education, they have a special status, right? For example, like in, uh, in Germany, and I think in the UK as well, in some other countries, if you buy an airplane ticket on any airplane and you happen to have a PhD degree on your ticket it will show doctor but it doesn't it's not the case in America but in some European countries they have it like that what now why do they do that they do that because they're trying to push the community to say hey if you study this many years there's some special value for you so they want to push people to be educated to that level so there are some some positions in society, they're considered to be generally uh, like more respected among people because they require a lot of effort and a lot of specialization and work. And some positions are considered to be more on the low side. It's not to degrade anyone, but they're just they don't require that much effort, like you know, flipping burgers or something like that. <laughs> Doesn't require that much training or effort. So what's happening is the shepherd 
in Arabia at the time was at that low status. So when they would walk up to the Prophet and they would ask him, they would change the wording and they would say, oh, our shepherd. <laughs> and he wasn't a shepherd anymore. He started out as a shepherd. He became a businessman. He was successful. He was doing well. But they wanted to degrade him, so they put him down. Right? So there's one more example that they used to do. and we, We've covered this again, but it's, it's a good reminder. The Jews used to come, the Jews of Medina used to come, and they would say to the Muslims, instead of saying, As-salamu alaykum, like Muslims are saying, they'd say, As-salamu as alaykum. Now the difference, you can barely even tell the difference between, and some Muslims do it so fast too. Say, As-salamu alaykum, As-salamu alaykum. The lam is missing. As-salamu alaykum means, what does it mean? Who Peace knows? Be upon you. Peace be upon you. As-salamu alaykum means, death be upon you. I remember when the Prophet Muhammad death be upon you. He said to the people, no. Yes, exactly. So, this is called like a twist of the tongue. You change one letter, you change something here, you change something there, because you're trying to do that in order to annoy the other person, to mislead the other person. And Allah is mentioning, this is what these people do. Yalwuna al sinatahum. They would twist their tongue, meaning they would make a slight modification on a word in order to give it a completely different meaning. So you have to be very careful, by the way. So And I know there's some kids here, so I just want to give you a warning, by the way. Kids like to play. Remember, though, like there's room for playing, but when you're talking about something like saying, you know, oh, I'm going to make a joke with my friend. One day I'm going to go and say, assalamu alaikum. That's not a joke that you do. You know why? Because that type of joke is imitating somebody whom Allah has cursed. Like that was somebody who is doing something so bad to the Prophet and to the Muslims in Medina, those are not the jokes that we ever engage in, right? So be extra cautious about ever trying to joke about something like that. This is something that would happen in history, but you can pretend on other things, but you never try to imitate something like this, okay? So this is what Allah is saying about what they did. They say it's from Allah. It is not from Allah. Allah is responding, this is not true. This is not the real wording. They changed certain things in the book. This was not part of the original book. They attribute lies to Allah knowingly. So they are lying on purpose. They're not accidentally misunderstanding. They know exactly what they're doing, but they still go ahead and say those things anyways. It is not right for someone who Allah has blessed with the book, the wisdom and prophethood, to say to people, worship me instead of Allah. Now, think about this for a moment. Who can tell me who is this verse referring to? Besides Jab. Yes. Prophet Isa, exactly. So what is Allah saying? Because the, the, the Christians are saying later on that Prophet Isa told us that we should worship him. But he didn't say that. And it's saying it is not right that if someone was given the book of Allah to them, Prophet Isa got the book of Allah, he got the wisdom, he was blessed with prophethood, and then after getting all of that from Allah, he starts telling everybody else, you know, guys, don't worship Allah. You should worship me instead. Like it's explaining to him, do you think somebody would do that? Do you think anyone who's a true prophet would ever do something like that? No. Never. It doesn't even make sense. So it's not it's giving you, it's not only giving you like a rational argument, it's giving you a moral argument of why there's no way Prophet Isa would have said something like this. Somebody else invented this doctrine later on. Instead, what would somebody like that actually say? Like what would make sense for them to say? Be devoted to your Lord because of what you read in the book and because of what you teach. Now the wording here is interesting. It says, because of what you what you teach and what you study, basically. Actually, the other way around. What you teach and what you study. Who is teaching and who is studying the Torah primarily among the, the people of the book? It's their scholars. It's their rabbis. It's their priests. It's their monks. It's the people who are literate. So this verse is not addressing the common people. It's addressing the scholars amongst those people. 
which tells us something about who was making the twist in the wording. It was the scholars. The scholars were the one who were corrupting the book. Why? Because the average person in religion, they don't know much, especially back then, they didn't have access to the book. They weren't able to read it themselves. So they would take whatever they hear from their scholars. But their scholars were twisting and changing the book around themselves. And that is a double crime. That is something that, you know, you have the ability to understand what is right and wrong. And then you go and you make a modification to the book of Allah. This is the worst thing. So this is what they were doing at the time. And then Allah says, وَلَا يَأْمُرَكُمْ أَن تَتَّخِذُوا الْمَلَائِكَةَ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ أَرْبَابًا and he would never ask you to take angels and prophets as lords. Who is the he referring to? I'm going to start asking a few more questions. Who is the he referring to? Uh, go ahead. No, good guess. Yes. He is singular. Mm -mm. How do you know that? Exactly. They were just talking about it. And it's continuing the same argument. Somebody who got the, the book, someone who got the revelation, someone who's blessed with prophet, he would never say, worship me instead. And he would never ask you, you know what? You should take these angels as lords. You should take these other prophets as lords. And why is this significant? If you look at Christianity throughout the Europe, you know, throughout Catholic history, we talked about this, the worship of saints has been extremely common. The worship of Mary has been extremely common. And the worship of angels basically have been elevated to being like at a status where you're almost worshiping them so this type of reveration or reverence for you know saints and angels and all of these people this is something that became part of christianity so it's responding to that and saying there's no way a real prophet like isa would have ever made a statement something like this it can't be would he ask you to disbelieve after you have submitted and you've accepted Islam? So basically what it's saying is, it's making another argument here. The argument is, what does it mean to disbelieve in the message of Allah? To disbelieve in some of the core tenets of Allah that he's revealed to you means that you're doing something that is fundamentally wrong that any prophet came with basically telling you, you're not supposed to do this. What are you not supposed to do? You're not supposed to worship anyone besides Allah or take anyone as a Lord besides Allah. That is like the, the most fundamental teaching of every single prophet that came. And if you, if you start doing the opposite, then you've basically disbelieved after you have accepted Islam initially, if you've accepted whatever the religion of Islam is, or the religion of Allah is, and then you've gone backwards and you said, you know what, but I'm going to go and worship somebody else. This is the problem. The people don't understand. You can't have correct religion if you're willing to do something complete opposite. I'll give you an example, a story. One time, you know, so, Amin was just asking me this the other day. He said, to what level do we investigate? I mean, I just mentioned you, by the way, ironically. So, 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 so he was asking me, he said, to what extent should we ask people their background of how they learned about Islam before they take their shahada and they say, I'm ready to accept Islam? So I gave him a story. I said, one time I went to a masjid. This was IAOC before I joined IAOC. And I pulled up in the parking lot and they said, somebody would like to accept Islam. I said, MashaAllah, this is great. The person must have been talking to them about Islam. They understand what Islam is. I said, okay, all you got to do. I said, are you ready? He said, yes, we would like you to do the shahada. So I said, okay, so repeat after me. We did the shahada. The guy said, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And we hugged him. MashaAllah, welcome to Islam. We're so happy that you're Muslim now. Yeah. And then I said, do you have any questions about Islam that you want to ask me or something like that? You know, about maybe how to pray, when you're going to, you know, how much you come to the masjid. Any questions you have? He said, I just have, I have one question. I said, what's the question? Does this mean that I'm, I can't pray to Jesus anymore? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm thinking, who made dawah to this guy? <laughs> you know, <laughs> who explained Islam to this guy? The guy didn't understand it. So I said, no, you can't pray to Jesus anymore. Oh, I didn't know that's what it meant to be Muslim. I don't know about this anymore. And we're like, oh, man. So this is the problem. You can't have Islam by simply saying, yeah, yes, I believe in the Prophet. And I believe in Allah. But I'm going to keep praying to somebody else. You can't have that. It's the fundamental aspect of what Islam, what it means to be a Muslim. So it's very important that people are very clear on this. 
And that's why Allah is making this argument. How can you say, okay, I, I'm Muslim. I'm accepting the religion of Allah, but then you're actually doing something which constitutes clear-cut disbelief. Can't be the case. Right? So this is what Allah is saying. And that was the last section. We'll continue, inshallah. Section 9, verse 81. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمًا Think about when Allah made a promise with the prophets, saying, Now that I've given you the book and the wisdom, ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُ النَّبِهِ وَلَتَنْصُرُنَّهِ If there comes to you a messenger, meaning later on in time, if there comes to you a messenger confirming what you have, you must believe in him and you must support him. Okay, this is maybe a little bit confusing. So let me clarify it for you. Every time a prophet was sent, the prophets would get a promise from Allah. So let's say Prophet Nuh, Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet, uh, prophet Musa. Every time a prophet would come, Allah would send them a revelation and he's saying, and I'm taking a promise from you that if another messenger comes as well, you will believe in that other prophet and you will support that prophet too. Meaning, you may not be the only prophet of this time. So you need to take that promise. Now why is this so significant? It's because people have a natural tendency when they get a special position, they're like, this is mine. I'm the special one, you know. And then all of a sudden, it's like somebody else comes along and says, here's the second special person. I thought I was the only special person. I'm supposed to be the only one who's special, right? So this is a natural tendency. So one, it's for the prophets. And two, the prophets were telling their people that if another prophet comes, whether it's in my lifetime or whether it's after I'm gone, you need to make sure you believe in the next one that's bringing the same message as well because they're all coming from Allah. So this was, now Allah is saying, this was a promise that was made with the prophets. Now, which two prophets is this most important for in what we're talking about in the surah? Like which are the two most important prophets that this prophet promise matters for people? Iman? Isa and Ibrahim. Mm, you got one of them. <laughs> yes. And you got one of them. <laughs> yes. Isa and Musa. Why? Because the the Christians are following Prophet Isa, or saying that they're following Prophet Isa. The Jews are following Prophet Musa. We're talking about Ahl al-Kitab here, the Jews and Christians. And why are they not accepting the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Because they're thinking in the, they're thinking themselves that you know what, we don't accept we don't accept any prophet that came after. And what is Allah saying? All the prophets, especially Isa and Musa, they were told that there's another prophet going to come. If another prophet comes. Let your followers know and you know that you must believe in them too. So their followers are supposed to know that there's another prophet coming. And it's mentioned in their books as well. But they were, they, this was part of their teaching. That there's another prophet going to be coming. So it's saying, you know what? Every prophet took this promise. So this is very relevant to the two of them. He further said, so Allah said, do you affirm this covenant, this promise, and accept this commitment? Are you accepting that if another prophet comes, you will follow him? So the prophets are being told this, and when the prophets are being told this, guess what they're going to do? They're going to tell all their followers this. And then the next generation, the followers are going to teach the next generation, say, by the way, our prophet came, and this is what he taught us. And he taught us that if another prophet comes, we must believe in that other prophet. So this, these are the people who are coming later on, and they're supposed to accept it. They said, yes, we have accepted this condition. Allah said, then bear witness. I too am a witness. So Allah is saying, basically, he took a promise from the prophets and saying, then you guys are witnesses against your people if they, if they violate this. And I am a witness that this message was conveyed to them. So they should have known better. So then Allah builds upon this. He says, Whoever turns back after this, they will be the true sinners. After What is this referring to? The promise that we just saw in the previous verse. Allah said, I'm a witness 
the prophets are witnesses. If anybody goes back and says, nope, we're not accepting any prophet after Musa. It's done. Or we're not accepting any prophet after Isa. It's done. Say, hey, that's not what your prophets taught. That's not what Musa taught. That's not what Isa taught. Go check his true teachings. So that's the response that's coming here. أَفَغَيْرَ دِينِ اللَّهِ يَبْغُونَ وَلَهُ أَسْلَمَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ طَوْعًا وَكَرْهًا وَإِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُونَ Do they desire a way other than Allah's, knowing that all those in the heavens and the earth submit to His will, willingly or unwillingly, and to Him all of them are going to be returned. Returned back to judgment, uh, returned back to Allah for judgment, right, to be judged. Now this is really interesting. Because what it's saying is that every single thing on earth, in the world, is a Muslim. Because what does Muslim mean? Who remembers what does Muslim mean? Shayda. Yes, you. Anyone who submits to Allah. So, if you think about it, a plant has a life cycle. It's going to grow if the water gets on there and the soil is right and the sun comes and everything like that. It grows in a specific way. Is that tree, is that seed going to somehow turn into like a car? No. There are certain laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set up in this world. And every one of those things follows the laws that Allah has set up. Right? So the, the plants follow Allah's rules. The animals follow Allah's rules. All the planets, the way in which they're moving and everything like that, they follow the rules that Allah has set for them. So technically, every plant, every animal is actually a Muslim because it's surrendering itself to the laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set up. So then, if you look at what about somebody who's a disbeliever? What about someone who doesn't even believe in Allah? Say, I don't even accept Allah at all. If you look at their body, every single cell in their body is actually a Muslim. Because it functions in a specific way. Every cell has little parts inside of it. And their arms, the way in which they, they work, every single part of their body, it is going to actually obey the laws that Allah has set for it. Even the person, there's one scholar, he mentioned this nicely. He said, even the person, when they use their mouth and they say, they say something like, I don't believe in Allah. The tongue and the mouth that they're using is actually a Muslim. <laughs> because it, it's following certain rules. You're not going to be able to speak unless you have certain, you have to have air, the sound waves won't travel. You can't do anything. Your whole body is a Muslim. The only part where you're able to do something, is Allah has given you a will. He's given you a decision in some aspects of things. That's why Allah says, everything submits to Allah, taw'an wa karha. Willingly or unwillingly, whether it wants to or whether it doesn't want to, everything from this aspect is actually a Muslim because it follows every single law that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set up for it. And then it's reminding you that, you know what, everyone is going to come back and be accountable for what they've done because you have this much free, free will to do whatever you want. The rest of your body, you can't be like, you know what, I am deciding that my headache is going away. And I'm deciding that if some, some illness comes, I am making a decision right now. I want it, me to be completely healed. Will it happen all of a sudden? No. No. If you say, I'm deciding, I'm going to just start flying right now. <laughs> you do that? No. You are restricted by the laws that Allah has set for you. So your body is a Muslim, whether you feel like being a Muslim or not. It's just that small part of choice that you have. Later on, whether you're going to accept what Allah is saying or whether you're not going to accept what Allah is saying. We're going to get to questions. Almost there. Almost there. All right. And then Allah says, قُلْ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَالْأَسْبَاطِ Say, we believe in Allah and what has been revealed to us and what was revealed to Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Ismail, Prophet Ishaq, Ya'qub, and the tribes, meaning his descendants that came later. وَمَا أُوْتِيَ مُوسَىٰ وَعِيسَىٰ وَالنَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ And what was given to Musa and Isa and all the prophets from their Lord. Basically, it's saying we believe in all the prophets that have been sent. We're not discriminating 
between them. La nufarriqu bayna ahadim minhum wa nahnu lahu muslimun. We make no distinction between any of them. And to him we submit. Now we say we make no distinction between them. What does that mean? Obviously they look different. They lived in different times. They had different heights. You know, they had different faces. What does it mean that we do not make any distinction between these prophets? Who can tell me? What is Allah trying to say here in this verse? Uh, you have not answered anything. Um, any difference in the message that they give? Exactly. Any difference in the message? Actually, you have answered something. Yes. But any, yes, that's fine. Any difference in the There's no difference in the core message that they brought. So why would you reject some of them? Doesn't make sense. And the last verse for today. Whoever seeks a way other than Islam. And what does Islam mean? Submission or surrender. If anyone seeks a way other than Islam, it will never be accepted from them. In the hereafter, they will be among the losers. But now Allah explains and saying, listen, the true religion is one. What is that true religion? It is surrendering and submitting yourself to the message that Allah has brought. Who brought these, this message? All the prophets brought that. If you go away from that message and you try and modify it and change it and bring it and turn it into something different, that is not going to be accepted from you. You can give whatever name you want to it. You could call it some new religion or you can call it some you know modification, whatever it is. Allah is only going to accept the true religion. Because that's the core. That, that's what it means to choose right and wrong. And I'll end with by saying we live in a society today where, if you can remember some of this, we live in what's called postmodernism. Postmodernism is this idea where there is no such thing as truth. Everything, everything is equally true and right at the same time. So if you say, you know what, one plus one equals two. Well, you know, that's your truth. That's your opinion, you know. But my view is something different. And if I hold a different view, then I'm entitled to do that. And you're disrespecting me if you don't respect my view. This is what has happened in today's world. They don't believe that things are, there's an absolute true and there's an absolute false. Right? And this is happening on so many levels. And this is very dangerous. It's a very strange notion. Be careful about anyone who's saying, you know what? All religions, they're all the same. They're all nice and they're all exactly the same. Whichever one you choose, they're all beautiful and they all result in the same thing. How can that be? One plus one equals two. But you can say one plus two equals two, one as well. or what? You can do whatever you want. It's all beautiful. It's all nice. No, there is a true and there is a false. This is not like art. This is not like, yeah, I like this painting. You know, you don't like this painting, I like this painting. We all have different tastes. Some things, it's open to taste. Some things are true and some things are false. If you don't believe that anything is true, you have a problem, right? There's, there's going to be a major, major problem. So it's very important that we understand these things in the right context, okay? So I'll leave it at that, open it up to questions, inshallah. Yeah. Among, <clears throat> among one of the reasons was, the rabbis, the, the scholars always are like the leaders. They, there was a jealousy, number one of them, that this guy's going to come and take over our position. So that was one aspect. The second aspect was they were so stuck in their ways, they said that he came and he said, I'm going to be lightening the burden for you and removing some of the old rules that you didn't need to follow anymore. And they're like, no, we studied all this fiqh and all these books of like how to do kosher and the details and all that stuff. We're not abandoning this. This guy cannot come and make any modifications to what came going back to you know uh, before Prophet Musa's time. So these were among the two reasons. Yeah, yeah. Here, the, you can never judge anybody. The 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 general rule, the general rule is Allah is just. Allah knows the capacity that people have, and whether they had a fair chance of seeing Islam for what it is. Right. Sometimes we err so much on making excuses for people. And sometimes we err so much on saying there's never going to be an excuse for anybody. It's somewhere in the middle. And we leave the rest of the judgment up to Allah. All right? We'll see you next week. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum.